Oh yeah, brother. Good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to Tony Commander, J.R. Kobokpa Chesson Talk Show. Today is September 18th, it's a Friday. We have gone through this whole week with all the calamity in America, in Liberia. We have made it for another week. Now as we approach this weekend, I want to give my children some hope. And let my children in Liberia and throughout the world know I'm talking about the, the downtrodden, the poor, the ghetto kids who don't have nobody. I'm talking to y'all. Y'all who's sleeping on the streets. Y'all who left alone with our fathers and mothers. Y'all who think there's nobody out there for y'all. But there is somebody out there for y'all. Besides God, there is a Tony Commander, J. R. Kopok by Chesson taking my time to teach you all because your future is my future. Your future is Liberia's future. Your future is America's future. Your future is the future that makes our world go around as a better, safer, secure world for all of us. And with all the evils going on in this world, with the proliferation of all the weapons and all the guns they keep filling in our world with, making new weapons to kill us, to destroy us, it can do nothing to us. Because those who are making it have no consciousness of the fact that if we die, all of us die. We see with the COVID-19 now, how just one little disease from China can spread all over the world and kill so many people. And this COVID-19 is not a natural disease. People were testing out germ warfare and stuff, you know? Now they have spread this thing all over the world. Our lives are in danger, our future. And you, my young children, are the future. And when your lives are in danger and threatened, our whole world is in danger and threatened. That's why I want to take some time to bring consciousness, awareness, truth to my young people so you can know that despite all this struggle for money and wealth, there are greater things that are the foundation or the foundations to our lives, both and profit. So my children, let me take some time. I was listening to I was listening to Armstrong Jagba this morning. And what you were saying was making some real good sense. He say he was a teacher and he breaks down economics in his own terms. What is economics for us? Growing food, being able to feed all of us and being able to sell it across the borders to our neighbors. The simple term of economics, supply and demand. When we can meet our own supplies, but the demands of our people in our own country, then we grow to share it with everybody. And my young Liberian children, what he was telling you is for Christian training, agricultural training. You don't need school for that. You don't have to go to school for that. But you need training. You need knowledge. You need to know how to plant, when to plant. What soil is good and fertile and can be used to grow rice? What kind of rice to grow? What kind of food to grow for our people? All these things we gotta study it and move away from this war and this killing. 
Yes, we need a good security force for our people. We got to ensure our national security. That is left for people. Who can plan this thing? Security people like me. That's my job to take care of your lives and your safety. But the foundation of our country is to feed ourselves. Once we can provide the three essential basics of life for our people and our country, everything else becomes just a matter of mechanism based on our patriotic zeals to see our country grow and progress and advance. And what do I mean by that? Once we have the manpower and the skills to do things for our country, all we need is to have the leadership that love our country and understand what it means to continue the growth of our children on a systematic path. So our people will always be able to feed themselves. Our people will always be semi-self-sufficient and not depend on the government. Yes, the government will be there to render subsidy. Subsidy is help to push you up. But you gotta stand up on your own and say we'll do this. And now the government has to support you. Like the money for the rice program that, that was divided among only four or five companies. That was not fair. Yes, we have big companies, but these big companies do not comprise the masses of the American Liberian workers and farmers. So giving one company a buck of the money is unfair. It's not fair at all. So we have to encourage all Liberians to grow and work together and benefit each other because our country is small. All our people got to live. And if we give few companies all the big money, we will not have money to reach to the other companies. And one company cannot help the masses of our people. We have smaller companies and, and, and farmers in different parts of our country that can benefit from everything our people have. So when we learn to work together, we learn to incorporate it with each other, form corporations, form working groups together so we can all help each other grow together. Now, when you give one person the bulk of the money, that person does not care about the other farmers. They're not thinking about joining with them, they're thinking about buying the land and things like that. And that displaces people. So all our planning, all our projects for advancing our country have to be inclusive of all our people. Because all our people gotta live. The resources are small. Whatever we're getting coming into our country is too small for us to just break up and give to one person and give to a few people. Everybody gotta enjoy the, the wealth of our country. So the idea of forming or giving our wealth to our people to say we're dividing money with farmers, all these grants we're getting to divide. The purpose of dividing it so that everybody get a share. Every farmer that can prove that they have a farm, that they have a system, a farming system going, benefits from that money, not only the big farm. So it encourages the big farm to connect with the smaller farms and form corporations where the big farm can help the smaller farm grow too and they can work together and sell their products and grow their stuff together. All the surrounding farms that, that are around the big farm, that are viable farms, can come together and work together. So these are the things, when we do these things, we don't only think about what is good for the country only. We have to think about what is good for the people in our country too. Because when we look at what is good for the country, it comes from what the people are doing and their participation in the country, in the development and the wealth of the country. So we gotta learn how to share the wealth. When we learn how to share the wealth, then we will learn how to be considerate of other people. Because once we start sharing the wealth semi-equally, 
because we can never be equal in any society. Let's face the fact. There will always be people who need, who produce more and need more. If they producing, if they got the farms that producing the things that meet the needs of our country, they deserve to get more because they, they, they're doing more. But we cannot neglect the other farmers in our area. We also have to know that these people are part of the Iberian economic structure and they need to be supported as well. So when we get money to devi among our corporations, our farmers and things like that, we cannot just give the buck to the five big companies and neglect the small farmers. No, 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 that's not how the governmental system works. So when we prepare all these things and understand how the system works to be somewhat fair and equitable to all our people, they didn't say equal, they say equitable. Equitable is somewhat equal. It doesn't have to be equal, but it's equitable. It makes all of us happy to feel that we got something, that not only one group of people got things. And these are the problems in our country that contributes to the derelict, the care of our young people and our future. Because we keep neglecting the masses of our people and focusing on a few, and we can't continue to do that. The wealth of the country is for everybody. And if our young people are not given the opportunities to, to participate in our government by sharing of the funds and the wealth of the country, we can't build our country and our people. We can't help our youth. So what Mr. Jagma was saying, um, Armstrong Jagma, what he was saying is that the two basic things in our country that we need to invest in is our youth first. How are we involving them in the economic process, in the nation building process of our country, instead of using them for political stooges all the time, giving them the sense of worth, giving them the sense that they're, they're, they're not running around in vain. Many of these kids cannot go to school right now. Many of these kids have no interest in school. They want to make money. They got children. They got having children. They, they'll get to the point that they will get responsible someday and learn that they got to take care of their children. And as Liberia changes and becomes more civil, the things that people used to do, when you will not be able to do it no more. As more Liberians come home and our country to begin to grow and advance and, and more uh, educated Liberians begin to be infused in the society, the things you're doing right now in Liberia, you will not be able to do it. Take my advice. It will not be able to happen. And you will be at the bottom of the totem pool. And that's what the people are telling you now that we shouldn't come home for. But you can't stop it. Liberia is our country. Once the things get better, we're coming home. And the U.S. got to ensure that things get better in our country now. You all see what they're doing in all the countries like Nigeria, all of them, they stop stopping them from traveling abroad. They're banning them. Any country that got violence during election, you will not be able to, your people will not be able to leave your country to go abroad. America will be shut down for you, to you. So all these kind of things are measures to ensure that we have better leadership in Africa. That we have leaders who are conscious of their country and people and not themselves and their family only. And these are the things we got to bring to our people. And I was so glad to hear and talk about talking this morning because he made sense. He made sense. Our youth are the people we got to invest in. Our youth are the people we need to take our time and focus on right now. You know, our children are wayward. Our children are not getting the educational acumen that they need 
And Mr. Armstrong always also talk about program he has in Liberia that called Integrity Club. The Integrity Club. Where he teaching, he got a group of children teaching them to go around to other countries and encourage children in the school to report their teachers. The teachers who are asking for bribe to give school and, and, and to get grades. The teacher who wants sex with the students and all the things. He got young children all over the country trying to impress upon the students in the school that they need to report the teachers. That they need to stand up for themselves. And when they report them to these groups, these groups will take the kids to the Ministry of Education to help the teachers fire, jail, or discipline. These are the kind of standards ordinary Liberian people got to take to help our youth. We got to help our youth. We got to understand that they need to be taught integrity. They need to be taught that they are better than stooges and sexual slaves to their teachers and all these other people in our society that use money and power to what do you call it? Something of the youth. Uh, there's a legal term, the structure of the youth of something. I would think on it, I will go on. And that's what these people are doing. They're destroying our youth. And our youth got to come to the consciousness that their lives mean something to them, that their lives are just beginning and they have a whole future before them. And whatever they do now contributes to their future. And we got to stand up for them and protect them. So our youth, our future, we need to invest in these children. We need to find ways to help them. They need mentors. They need uh, uh, people that can help them, that can give them hope that they can do better. And one of the ways is for us to come and focus on what we got already. All these farming people getting loans from the government, all these people got to get together and encourage our young people to focus on farming, to focus on different activities, not only farming. They can do different, different things in our community to help to build our community up. One group of people could form a team to clean up Morovia. You know, people got to invest in our youth. All the money you got, all the people going home with money, what does it take to get a children five, five dollars every week to clean up our country? And you supervise them, buy the materials they need, form the people group and go into these communities and clean them. Teach the people that it's a necessity to have that environment clean for their own health, for their own safety. And not only tell them, go there and work with them to clean up the community, to clean up our country. We got to form corporations. We got to form private groups with citizens who love our country because these government officials we got, they have no consciousness of the plight and sufferings of the people of Liberia. They want to live like Tottenham and Ellen Johnson and they don't have the money. So what they got to do, they can come there and steal and take their money in the slums to divide among themselves or to hide under the beds. You know, these people are disgusting. Can't go through this time and time again. So it's up to us, leaders of our country, the people who care for our country, to come together and invest in our youth. If we gotta form corporations ourselves, we need to come together and form corporations. Like people with money, we need to put our money together to save our country. Get rid of these crooks in our government. We ain't gotta form no revolution that the force or nothing. It takes nothing. It takes going home and putting our own money together and taking those initiatives to clean up our country, to unite our people, to teach them that there is a better way for our youth and taking them and giving them jobs and teaching them 
that they are important, they are significant to our country. And I agree with it. We need to take them back to the soil. No work in Liberia. Mm. If we can offer the children small money to go to the farm and do work, if they want to do work, give their houses to live in, give them the opportunity to build their own lives, some of them will take the chance and leave Monrovia and go anywhere we want them to go. But we got to provide the opportunities for them to excel and grow. You know, giving people money here and there, it doesn't help our people. It doesn't help our people. We need private groups now to take over where our government has failed and ensure that whatever we do our, our, for our people, our government is part of it. They got to join it. They got to invest in it. If they don't, they can't lead our country. They can't lead our people. And that comes from empowering our people, ourselves. It got to be done. Because these leaders we got in our country, they are useless. We cannot depend on our government consistently and wait for our government to do for our society what we can do ourselves. And this will take all this dependency thing away from our people and bring them to the consciousness that we are men and women of our own country. We can stand up on the foundation of our own feet, our own legacy. Build ourselves. Now people will not be crying for war crimes quote all the time or begging foreigners from the international community to come feed us and can help us. We can do better. Our older people who are the conscious patriots of Liberia got to stand up, got to come together, got to open the way for our young people to find the light, to find sources of enlightenment, of jobs, being able to help. Right now, $5 a day got a lot of money for people in Liberia. People not even get $5 a day. Now, if we can provide these children the atmosphere where they can come together, be assured of having money in their pockets every day, be assured of having a bowl of food every day, if it's not three times, at least two times a day, be assured that they will go out and work and get paid. The lives of our people will begin to change slowly. Our people will begin to think about self-sufficiency about making their own money. And, and, and if you, you go, you go back, uh, I think he was on Costa's page, Costa's show, and, and watch Armstrong Jabba video. You know? It's a constant start to where we need to begin to invest. He's focused on agriculture because that's the foundation of what we need in our country to feed our people. Our people are starving. And when we talk about agriculture, it's not only rice. It's cassava, it's yam, it's potato, it's different, different foodstuff that can feed our people. And there will come a time we cannot depend on Western food to do the things we need to do. And all the bread and things that come from the West, we can make our own bread. We can make a sour bread, we can make potato bread, we can make rice bread, we can make all these breads in our country. So why are we dependent on foreign food? And if our people learn the processes, become innovative, they can make things with our own food that can be similar to Western food. It may not be the same, but it can be similar. And the whole idea is to be able to feed ourselves with the food grown in our own country. And we can do it. Now this kills two birds with one stone. That solved our one our self-sufficiency problem for food. Secondly, that gave our youth jobs and opportunity to learn skills and be able to advance their innovative thinking. Participation in the development of our country. So my people, there are many avenues to bringing our people and our young children to the consciousness they need for the progress and advancement and advancement of the future of our country. Sooner than we think, 
faster than we think. And these are the things all of us need to think about. These are the things our youth need to start thinking about. Start becoming about conscious about your life, your life, your life. Your life it does not depend on George Weah. Your life does not depend on the government. Get that out of your head. Whoever comes to power should not matter to you. What should matter to you is you are on a path to doing something for yourself to be self-sufficient, to be able to feed you and your family. And no government can give you that or take that away from you. And those are the three essentials of life we need to bring to our people. That everybody in our life need food, we need clothing, we need shelter. How do we get food? We work for it. We work the farms. We work the, 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 the land. We build. We grow our food, we feed ourselves. How do we get shelter? We build. We build. We build. And clothing is the last thing we need. And we can only provide that for ourselves. We can't continue to depend on foreign people to bring that to us. We cannot continue to be thinking international community. We cannot be continue to think America, America. We gotta think Liberia first. That's the foundation of Liberianism. That's the foundation of knowing that we are men and women for ourselves. And we cannot continue to depend on other people to do for us what we have the conscious ability, the conscious power of God to do for ourselves. The time of the Liberian people is now. And we gotta think of our future, which is our children. We gotta think of our future, which are the, the young, innovative minds that are sitting down being wasted, talking politics and running around with this munya munya stupid stuff when we need to take our people from the mats today still and raise them up to mattresses time of the Liberian people is now. I cannot stress this any further. I'm not here today to talk long. I gotta go. And I want you all to know our children, our future, we got to figure a way to care for our children, to take the, the lives and the purpose for their lives out of the hands of the government, out of the hands of politics, out of the hands of the demagogues that want to use them for their own political aggrandizement. And we got to focus on our children. It takes a community, it takes a village to raise a child. Can't forget that. Foundation of our African cultural upbringing pattern. That's the battle we use from time immemorial. It takes a village to raise a child. We gotta put all these patches together because our children are significant. Our lives and the future of our nation. We gotta focus on our children. We gotta pay attention to our youth. And we can't wait for the government of Liberia to do that. These native people have no consciousness of what it is. children and bring people to have no consciousness of that. And it's on all of us to ensure the future of our youth is far better. The future of our youth is the future of Liberia. The future of our youth, everything that thinks, country, growth, advancement, and prosperity. Have to take time, pay attention to the progress and advancement of the youth of the West African Republic of Liberia. The time of the Liberian people is now. Aluta continua. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope my lesson touched on the significance of why we need to pay attention to our youth. Why we need to pay attention to our country, the development of our economic system, the development of the, the, the essence of our people that need 
to be built upon the foundations of what our country needs and what our people believe in and stand for. We need to ensure that our people are fed, that our people are clothed, and our people have the chance to pursue their own happiness in whatever way they want. And that is clothing. Clothing in mind, in body, and in spirit. The time of the Liberian people is now. Aluta! Continue. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm out.